entrepreneur. A God-fearing woman who has devoted her time to ensuring that God's message is used to empower everyone, but most especially women. With a strong belief in the importance of women empowering women and educating each other through our life experiences, she is the founder of Women's Forum, Let's Be Real, a forum for women to work through issues and set and accomplish goals together. Held every second Friday of every month at 6 Elton Road, Lee Green, London. Keep up with Let's Be Real here on PRZFM every Tuesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Be Real on PRZ Radio 109.2 FM. My name is Jumi Opredali. I'm your host. Thank you for tuning in again today. Uh, we really appreciate you on this uh, program. Wherever you are all over the world, we are so delighted to bring this program to you. Uh, on Let's Believe, we talk about real life issues that affect our lives and our community. And we have uh, tonight, we have a special topic that I know is very relevant wherever you are, whether you are in the United Kingdom, United States, you are in Nigeria, you are in Ghana, you are in Canada, wherever you are, this particular uh, topic is very relevant to you. And I'm so delighted tonight that I'm not going to discuss this topic on my own. I've got uh, my special guest in the studio that will be able to dissect this particular topic with me i've got um our kids prince assembly member in the in the house i'm so so delighted out of his busy schedule is able to come in and talk to us about this and i'm delighted to have his wonderful wife as well tayo prince on in the studio with me you are very much welcome thank you thank you good evening okay so please don't forget that if you have a special topic you want us to bring on here you can email it to us on lesbilyrprzfm.com lesbilyrprzfm.com and we'll be able to uh discuss it and if you have any question as well please don't forget that you can email it to us or any contribution God bless you as you continue to tune in. Uh, now let's go straight to the topic of today, safer community. Safer community. Everybody wants a safe community. You don't want to live in an environment that you are so scared to go out. You are so scared to, to forget to lock your door. You are so scared to walk down the street. You are so scared to, your children have gone out. You are, you are scared until they come back home. You, nobody wants to live in such an environment. But these day and age, things are becoming ridiculous. But I know that God will help us. Uh, before we start, let me uh, ask my guests to introduce themselves, to just tell us a bit about themselves so that you know where they're coming from. Oh, good evening. Well, I'm Keith Prince. I'm the Assembly Member for Havering and Redbridge. Uh, an Assembly Member is someone who's elected at the same time as the Mayor of London. There's 25 of us. And we are elected to scrutinise what the mayor does. So we ask him questions, we make suggestions to him. And generally, we just try to help the mayor to do a better job. Thank you so much, Kate. Uh, my sister, do you want to introduce yourself? I know you are the chair of the Safer Community Neighbourhood. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Tayo Prince. And on a voluntary capacity, I chair the Safer Neighbourhood Board in Lucian. And... This board exists in every borough in London. So there are 32 Safer Neighbourhood Boards in London. I chair Lucian Safer Neighbourhood Board. And it's an independent um, forum where we bring the police to account of what's happening in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now you've tell us what Never, uh, Safer Neighbourhood is all about. is to bring the police to account of what is happening. And then give the, uh, the public the, the confidence to, to know what the police are doing. Maybe they're on their side. I've been in a couple of meetings that you chaired. And I was so impressed about the discussion and how the relationship between the community and police were coming together, which was fantastic. Now... We are talking about safer community. What will a safer community look like? <laughs> well, that's um, a nice question, something to think about. Sometimes we're thinking whether 
it's a safer neighborhood, safer community, or a safe environment. Mm. We're actually thinking like having heaven on earth. Mm. How can we make our environment safe for everybody to live in? So it's how we look at it. Do we, we, want, we definitely want it safer than it is now. Mm. We want it safe enough for people to live and be able to do all the aspire to do without fear mm. and without any unnecessary agitations. Thank you. Kids, do you want to add a bit to that? No, I, I think Ty mm. put it very well. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. So, a community whereby we will be safe. I remember that what we read about the olden days, especially in the community that I come from, you can leave your goods in the, on the, in the uh, front of your house without anybody touching it you can leave your doors open without any intruders coming in but we don't have such a community now so i think when we think about holding days we think we see that they are safer than now every time you if you don't have c slashes door on your door now lock on your door your insurance will go up so there are so many things that is telling us our community is not as safe as it used to be so we want everyone on it a community that looks like that but since we don't have that now what do you think parents should be doing to have this kind of environment well we see each home as a unit of the community mm. so the parents have a very important role to play in safety primarily to look after the family in the house and mm. this extends to outside of the home Mm. Because it's all these that come together that make the community. If you are safe within your house, you are safe within your family, you're taking it into your extended family, your neighbors, then the whole local environment becomes a community. So we have to think of how parents can contribute to community safety. It starts from the home. If they are in touch and they are having a good grip of mm. what's going on in their home, if each parent can vouch to say, as for me and my household, mm. we are secured. Mm. We take all the necessary precautions, things are well safeguarded, then that's one step in the right direction. If we can get an aggregate of such parents, mm. you know within that immediate community, there's safety. Mm. Then you can now start dealing with intrusion from somewhere outside of that local community. True. But as we stand now, we can't really say the problems are strictly from outside your immediate environment. Mm. So it's something we have to look clearly at. What is each parent doing to ensure their safety in the home, their mm. safety within their immediate environment, mm. not just for themselves, even for their next door neighbor. neighbor. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, so you want to? Yeah, I, I think it's very important that uh, parents take ownership of mm. their children. Mm. Uh, you find today that a lot of parents have what we call latchkey children. They send the children out first thing in the morning to go to school and then they don't see them again until much later in the day. And mm. I think it's important mm. that parents take ownership of their children, that they show their children that they're loved, that they spend time with their children. You see it in the streets, mothers on their mobile phone and finding the little children an irritation <laughs> rather than actually talking to the child, explaining what's going on mm. and making that child not only feel loved but also to ensure that child has a real sense of self-worth. Mm. And it's this lack of self-worth, it's the fact that the children don't feel part of something that encourages them to get in with the wrong crowd because they want that companionship. Thank you so much. I, I agree with what both of you have said that the issue starts from the home. Parents don't have time for their children. They don't even know their children. They don't know what they're up to. One day I was on the bus and I was listening to the conversation of these school children. My heart was bleeding. That I can't imagine the parents understanding what these kids are up to because they don't know them. Mm. One child was, for example, a, a girl was saying that she gets home five minutes before her mom's gets home and the mom never knew that today she has to rush back home because as one of her aunties are home 
that that silly auntie is at home today. I have to be home on time because my mom will be calling me. I'll tell her, yeah, yeah, I'm doing my work. And she's on the streets. So, Parents, we need to take time to look after our children, know them. In fact, in recent time, there was a survey from one of my board members. And what she found out is a lot of young people actually complain they do not have quality time mm. with their parents, mm. though they are still on the straight and narrow. Mm. But those that are completely lost, they are happy they don't have that intrusion. Mm. So it's true parents need to do more. Mm. Because they are the primary caregiver and they need to know what their children have, are up to. They need to safeguard their children mm. from getting into wrong company or creating problems. True. This is Let's Believe on PLZ Radio 109.2 FM. We are making a call to all parents to be responsible for their children. Know your children, spend time with them, love them, make sure that you, you encourage their self-worth. So that they won't be looking for some other things outside. Because there's something they are looking for outside and make them vulnerable. So please, let's look after the children that God has given us. Either biological or adopted or, or uh, spiritual children. We have a responsibility to look after them. And God will give us grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we are talking about safer community. I believe that church has a responsibility as well. What should the church be doing? Well, the church is another extension of the family mm. because for every word of the Lord is primarily to you as an individual, mm. it's to you as a family, and the family of God is the church. Mm. So the church has a role primarily to pray and set the tone right, to make clear what is right from what is wrong. Mm. And not just praying, also making it relative to everyday issues. There's no point going to church where you cannot learn how to make your life better, where you cannot get the right information or mm. the right referrals when you have issues. Mm. And a church should be a safe haven mm. where people who are troubled can come and get words of encouragement, can get ideas to improve their lot. Mm. And also, we don't want churches to be judgmental mm. because there are many people who are hurting or who have problems. But because of the holier-than-thou attitude, <laughs> they cannot really take this to people mm. who should be able to help okay. them. Mm. A lot of people look up to their ministers in church. Mm. So they should be able to go there and express what concerns they have. And the church in return should be well-equipped mm. to help them through these difficult situations. Mm. Thank you so much. I, I, let me just echo what you're saying, that a church should be a place whereby prayer is said, that, and prayer is taught confidence anyway. So a place that they will say the truth as it is, that they will encourage people even to do the right things. And also a place that uh, they will talk about real life issues, not just in those days. Bring the Bible to life in, in, the, in the community. And it's, it should also be a place that we are not judgmental. Don't judge people. Let them come because they need safety. And that is why they can e easily express themselves and they can see that they are in a safe place. Uh, Keith, do you want to add to that, please? Yeah, I think there's some real practical, other than just the theological mm. side of things, there's some real practical work that the church can do. I mean, first of all, the church could run courses on parenting. And that, I think, would be really helpful, really practical. You know, any other job that we do, we have to pass exams, we have to go to school, we have to learn how to do it. Mm. But actually, the most important <laughs> job in the world is being a parent. Mm. And there, in most cases, are no lessons, no education. Mm. So that's a role that the church could, could really play a very large and, and important role in. Mm. Uh, secondly, something that the churches could do, they could run after school clubs I mean, a lot of the problem is that these children get out of school around about half past three their parents don't come home from work till five six seven o'clock so if they were able to go to an after school club they would have that sense of belonging you'd if it was a church absolutely we would teach them about their own self-worth we'd give them confidence mm. we'd make them better human beings and by doing that that would also be a great way of 
diverting them away from being in the company of the wrong kind of people. So True. I think there's a lot of practical work that the church could do and obviously that would give us the opportunity to teach these children all about the Bible. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That a church should be a training ground as well. And what we would teach will be different from what they will gather from their uh, peers or from the internet or from strangers that will tell them the wrong thing. And the art of children are always learning. They want to learn. Yeah. They can learn from anywhere. Yes. So there's a call on the church that we need to be teaching the parents, parenting skills. Teach your Parents in the church, parenting skills, some people don't know anything better, except they are being taught. We learn things from school, as uh, uh, Keith just said, we learn things from everywhere. Why can't the church le teach the right things as well, the right skills for parents to be looking after their children and make them have their own self-worth? Also, after school club. Because, you know, in these clubs, they learn to do many things. But if it's in the church, we will teach them the right thing to do. And there will be no time to learn from any other person. They finish there, they go home, and their parents are home already. So what the parents could have been teaching them, the church will help to teach them as well. This is a very good idea. I believe that some of our listeners are going to start to initiate this in their churches so that we can help our community. It doesn't have to be your own child that you will be teaching. We can bring the children together and teach them and help the parents that are struggling in one way or the other. And I believe that this, no matter what, this will help the community. If we do little, little things like this, the environment will become a better place. Uh, I think you made a very good point. It's not just about our own children. As, mm. as followers of Christ, every child is our responsibility. Mm. Mm. And to add to that, it could even be an opportunity for intergenerational learning. There are mm. a lot of elderly people who are relatively bored. Mm. So if they have access to get engaged with these young people whose immediate parents might not be so available, mm. they can learn things that their parents are not Teaching readily mm, there to give to them they can learn from these older parents so the parents are enjoying the company of the young ones mm. and catching up with new ways of doing things mm. learning new things from young people mm. while the younger people will also learn from the much older ones how things were done in the past mm. and that intergenerational learning is very important it's also a way of custodia holding on to good cultures, good values. Mm, so, mm. you know, when people get much older, they even have more patience than That's their immediate true. parents. That's true. So we can explore those attributes mm. as well, mm. bring the very young and the elderly together to benefit from one another. Fantastic. That's a good one. Let me just bring his, a little humor to this. I, I met a lady sometimes. I went to a place and the lady said, oh, she wants to cook because she's going to get married. And the mom... I don't know where they got it wrong that the mother didn't teach her to cook and she wanted to she was asking the somebody what should i buy when i go shopping buy meat buy this should i wash the meat with sparkling water or still water <laughs> and i was like wow. on this planet where did she come from and i was i sat down i was thinking over it over it over it has she not seen her parents cook before if such a person we have a cook quick class in the church maybe she would have learned before the time of getting married so i just discovered that not everything that people learn from their home no. so the church can step in and help them especially such people that i don't know how she grew up <laughs> to that, that asking for sparkling or still water to wash me is so it was so embarrassing i was thinking and that sent me thinking that oh my god what will my children take away from this house if they don't know what to use to wash meat uh, it's, honestly it, i couldn't believe it now let's go down to the community as individual members of the community what should we be doing to make our community safe like uh we've said earlier on there should be a collective responsibility everybody should be part of safeguarding their community mm. we should be very proud of where we live mm. we should be proud of what happens in our area, mm. we should want to contribute to making it a safe place. Mm. 
Mm. We cannot solely rely on police officers or council officers to keep our environment safe. Mm. It is our community. So collectively, we should work together to make it as safe as possible. Because some of the times, the police rely on us. We are the ones that know what is going on in our immediate environment. Mm. The police can patrol the street. They can't stand where the problem happens. True. So we need to be able to know what's going on, pass on information to relevant authorities, mm. nip things in the board before it gets out of trouble. Mm. We'll find out that most times when there's a murder, you find a lot of people are angry and they come up, they want to ask questions, they want to give, but it's not what you do as firefighting. Mm. It's a continuous exercise. Mm. It's something we have to continually engage in. Do a little bit. And I know there are a lot of people who like to do things to help. Sometimes they don't know how. Mm. So it's like knowing exactly how much you want to give into it and where you can come in helpful. Mm. That's why places like Safer Neighborhood Board can be of importance. It can be from the very local level where you help your neighborhood watch. Mm. It can be just one street, your street. You take ownership that on this street, we want to be sure that we don't have crime. We want mm. to minimize it if possible, eliminate it. So on my street, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. Or you want to decide that my whole world, I want to contribute to setting priorities for my ward mm. or you want to be part of an organization that take particular interest in certain things you could have a target group be it people in custody mm. or you might want to work with victims whatever mm. your passion is there's always a place that it can come in useful fantastic thank you so much there's so many things that we can do as individuals has, has been listed be a member of any uh, community we are uh, community uh, neighborhood watch and make up we have to make up our mind that's what you are saying that we i will be i will contribute to making my community safe by doing one thing or the other and when we see crime that we cannot undo we need to uh, report it immediately before it escalates or something like that the other day i saw some people wanting to start a fight and i was saying that Please, I hope somebody call the police. I hope somebody call the police before they kill themselves. Not after they've killed themselves that yeah. police will come and put the ribbon around the area and then... Condor not mm. off the place. Yeah, we don't mm. want that it's to happen. It's nice you even said that. The other day I was in Lucian was quite a while back. There were like, there was a one young person with about 12 other people. Mm having altercation and that guy only had one person sort of trying to help mm. but they can't deal with 12 people and it was surprising because quite a number of people just stood away scared mm. of the young people mm. of course nobody is saying put yourself in arms way yeah. but i just step aside and call the police i that's, was shocked that right. in less than three minutes mm. we had a van load of police officers who came and everything dis dispersed mm. I, I well, think we, we should we, always try to do something, something. to curtail mm. the problem. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I believe that people that are listening to us now are taking one thing or the other to do to make sure our environment is safe. If you're not doing it for somebody that you know, you will do it for somebody that you don't know because it will go round and round and round and God will help us in Jesus' name. Do you want to add something to that? Kate? Just a couple of mm. things. First of all, I think we have to actually perform by example so it's how we conduct ourselves in public that is the example that mm. children will watch you know you see adults going along the street throwing litter in the road and, and things like that well if you behave like that what, mm. are, they, what are the children <laughs> learning so it's you have to be aware all the time how you behave mm. and Obviously, we have a, an even bigger mass. You know, is this how Jesus would want us to behave? But just be mm. aware that whatever you do, if children are observing your manner, then they, they are likely to copy it. Mm. Uh, and an example of real practical work in uh, Redbridge, the area that one of the areas that I represent, we had a lot of problems with burglaries in part of our area. So what we've done is we've set up a number of WhatsApp groups so okay. Each, each zone is about four roads. They have a WhatsApp group. All the residents can join that WhatsApp group 
and they will spend their day chatting on the WhatsApp but in the evenings they go out in twos and threes and they actually walk around the street uh, reporting back all the time they never get involved they don't uh, actually intervene in anything but if they see anything that's a bit dodgy they the call the police mm. and if they see someone who's not who's behaving a bit strangely they whatsapp that and that person is literally observed the whole distance they go down the street and if they do anything untoward then bang straight on to the police fantastic that's a good way of uh, doing things uh, our community uh, relationship is very important that everyone knows each other everyone is doing the same thing mm. everyone has the same goal the same mission that we should report issues so that it, it won't be so no one will be left out i'm sure that will reduce the crime on that particular area yeah it has it has massively reduced the number of burglaries that we have in that area and as you quite rightly say there's now a new sense of community we lost that many years ago back in the 50s 60s there was a real sense of community you knew everybody in your road you knew who lived next door to you but nowadays in a mm. lot, lot of parts of london that isn't the case and that certainly wasn't the case in this area but now they uh, regularly go out for coffee we have a session over in the park once a month so it's really building a sense of community now fantastic please if you can uh, adopt that uh star in your environment that would be good that would be great so someone should go away tonight and go and initiate it <laughs> so that we can be uh, our brother's keeper and also it's so it's very very key that we live by example very very key that we live by example you can open roll down your car and throw something on the street and telling another child not to do so they will say yeah that's the way my mom does it that's the way my dad does it they don't even have to spell it out because you won't be able to correct them because you've done it wrong why they are there we need to make sure that we are living right so that people that sees us can copy the same so it's very very important that we live by example thank you so much we've got so many things that has been discussed uh, tonight if you want to listen to this again please go and download this on the soundcloud our safer community by Les Bele in uh, Jimmy Okwedale, Kilt and Tie Your Prince. You'll be able to listen to this over and over again, and you'll be able to take one tip or the other that you're going to uh, begin to do in your church, in your, as a parent, or as a member of the community. And I believe that God will make us uh, to be useful in our environment and make our community safer in Jesus' name. Now we want to move into another big question, big question that is that is so worrying these days. I know that many people have heard this: that knife and gun crime is on the rise, is on the rise. And even if one person is killed, is sad enough. And we have been talking about this thing over the years, especially in this uh, environment in London. I don't know what exactly is happening. I don't know what you want to say about this particular topic. Hmm. Well, there's so much that has been said, especially now with the increase in violence and a reasonable amount is attributed to youth violence. We hmm. already had 100 violent deaths hmm. in August. Jesus. This is way more than what we've had in recent years. Hmm. And it just seems like we're firefighting. Mm. A lot of people have said there is a cut down in resources. But if we think of each family, mm. we can't really afford everything we would like to have. True. We set priorities and we spend according to what we have. Mm. The limited resources available. We need to ask ourselves, is this being spread and spent appropriately? Mm. And it's not everything that needs money. Mm. There's a lot of preventative stuff that can be done. The underlying issues around this gun and knife crime is drugs. Mm. There's a lot going on around drugs that bring about a lot of violence. Mm. Some people see it as a way of a pathway to financial breakthrough. Mm. But like we said earlier on, that most things start from the home. How mm. has the parents set priorities in their personal life? Mm. 
Mm. A lot of people have gotten their priorities all mixed place. They think they have to buy very expensive things. People do not need a lot of expensive things to be happy. We need basic things to survive. I'm mm. not saying we should not aspire to improve. But if you can find food to eat, mm. somewhere safe to put your head, mm. and you have a safe environment, most other things, you take it along the way. But we find a culture now where people are into designers. They want a lot of money. Mm. They want this get rich quick attitude. A lot of parents, both parents working, there's no time for the children. If sure. the parents cannot set good priorities, why do they expect to your children to behave appropriately? Mm. So it comes back to the home. We have to look for ways to strengthen the family. If we can strengthen the family, we will strengthen the community. True. We need, like they said, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Most mm. parents do not lay good examples for their children. I'm not trying to put the blame strictly on parents, but There's more so often than courses. not, mm. either from commission or omission, mm. either they did not do something they need to do, they are not paying enough attention. Because if you're close to your children, by the time somebody else is influencing them, you might mm. not know the details, but you begin to sign. see some changes. Mm. And you sign. can pick that up and start looking for how to sort it up. There are a lot of parents who don't know their children. True. They will vouch for you, oh, my child can never do this, because mm. they do not know what's going on in the lives of the children. True. Their lives are not well packaged. Mm. So when they're talking... Children, they respect what they see more than what you say. True. Mm. So they see all the flaws around them. When you talk, there's no respect. Mm. In fairness, there are some parents doing the best they can. Especially my heart goes out to single parents mm. because it's not meant to be. Mm. A child is meant to have both father and mother. And some people find themselves where they have to do it all alone. Mm. It's difficult. And that's where we look for role models. Mm. There are people who got it right, whose marriages are working. Are they looking out for the child next door who only has one parent? Mm. Are they reaching out to make sure that this one child, with this single uh, parent child, is being taken care of? Mm. Because if they don't, that child might become a problem to their to child mm. later in life. Mm. We need to be a neighbor's keeper. We need mm. to look out for one another. Mm. And that way we can strengthen what's on in our community. Thank you so much, uh, uh, my sister, because this is a very, very complex situation. But well, you've spoken about this particular important aspect of it, that parents, we need to take a stand. We need to know our children because the children are looking for what will lead a child to be looking for drug because they don't know the standard of the f household. Or what? Why would they be looking for drug? Why would they be selling drug? Why would they be using taking drug when their parents are not taking drug? So they, there are so many questions that we parents need to ask ourselves. That where have we gotten it wrong? Where are these people? Because some parents they just be they are just in the denier. Oh, my child is a this is genius, is innocent, is this until something big happens. We need to come down to their level, not spend all the time looking for money. Let's send, spend the time teaching them that be satisfied with what you have. I, I know our kids want to tell us more about the causes of all these issues. I think that um, Ty is absolutely right around the causes mm. and, and what she's saying is very much something that would mean we don't, wouldn't have the problem we have today if, if people were to mm. observe that. But I would say that this recent spate that we're having uh, really goes back to the dreadful decision taken by Theresa May when she was uh, the Home Secretary, and then that was augmented by the current Mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan, when both of them decided that stop and search was a bad thing and that ordered the police to reduce massively mm. the amount of stop and search and with a, within a very very short time we saw knife crime go through the roof and mm. it's very simple there's two reasons why people carry a knife one is because they want to do others harm 
the other is for their own self-defense. So a lot of innocent people carry knives for self-defense. But what we find in the figures is that that is often the knife that is used to either seriously harm them or, or in some cases to kill them. Mm. So we have to get both those off the streets. The way we do that is we have stop and search. And what that does is, first of all, if there's a high level of stop and search, the young people, the innocent young people, know that if they're found with a knife on them, they become a criminal. So for immediately they stop carrying they a knife. Carry so that massively reduced the number of knives on the uh, on the streets. And then you have a situation where even the bad guys know that there's now a serious risk that they will be found out and be sent to prison mm. because that's what happens if you carry a knife. So that reduces it as well. That in itself will see a reduction. And in fact, in the areas where we are beginning to see a plateauing, that has happened as a direct result of the current commissioner doing a votre face and the mayor having to back her in doing more stop and search. Hmm. So I hope the government are doing something about that now because I I also believe so. When you know you'll be caught, you wouldn't carry what you are not supposed to carry. So I, on the side of the government, somebody has to tell them to do the right thing, to change the policy if it's not working. If something is not working, you change the style. So it's so, it's so huge that even the innocent ones carrying knife, they know that nobody will stop me, nobody will check on, check on me. And even the parents doesn't know. They don't know that knives are missing in their home because they betray, they trust their children or maybe I don't know maybe they are scared of their children or they are, they trust them so much. So it's just becoming very chaotic, very very chaotic. So we are calling on the government to do the right thing. If so, stop and search. I know some people do complain about it, but if you don't have a skeleton in your cupboard, what's the problem? Well, I, I've got a very simple answer. To that first of all. It's not really the government, and this is where Theresa May went wrong. Stop and search should be an operational decision for the police, and they should decide whether or not they need a certain level of stop and search. And this is when politicians get involved in areas they sure. should. Mm. Theresa May is guilty of that, and so is Sadiq Khan, and that's both Labour and Conservative. So I'm not being <laughs> I'm not being party political on this, mm. uh, but my answer when people say, "Oh, it's terrible," my son keeps getting stops and search. I'm very happy to explain to any parent why their child is being stopped and searched. And I would much rather explain to a hundred parents the reason why their child was stopped and searched than to have to go to one parent and explain their child has died. It's dead. Hmm. That's absolutely correct. Absolutely. And I, I'll, and I think mm. on the issue of stop and search, every now and then the topic is a very emotive one. But we found out that people really do not mind stop and search. Mm. It's a tool for the police to help keep communities safe. Mm. The reservations are usually about how it is done. It's being monitored, it's being scrutinized. We need to work more at it. Mm. The police and a lot of people in the community like for stop and search to be done, but they want it to be done professionally. Mm. They talk about the profiling and that can be explain one way or the other but i would agree it's better to be stopped than for somebody to die mm. yeah i mean the good thing now of course is that uh police carry body worn cameras and that mm. means that uh that's protection for the police but it's also a protection for the person being stopped and searched true and what we are finding is that we are getting much more calm engagements with the police with the public because both know that they're being filmed, both know that they're being recorded, and as a result of that, both have to act with a lot more respect towards each other. Fantastic. That, that's true. I don't know what we as the community member can do to influence the, uh, this decision that <laughs> overrule the stop and search. Is there anything that we should be doing? Well, there were a few things that were on the line there was a strategy on knife crime and there were surveys sent out mm. as people are angry about what's happening 
it's ridiculous to find how many people bother to fill the survey. Mm. Sometimes we like to talk about the problems, but we're not really willing to do anything about it. A lot mm. of people will tell you they're very busy. Some of these surveys doesn't take more than five, ten minutes to. If you cannot find ten minutes to express your opinion that you feel strongly about, why do you think things should change? Mm. <laughs> Well, I've actually told Sadiq Khan that he's wrong. I told him at the time, I've told him again that he's wrong in uh, trying to reduce stop and search. And I believe uh, just recently, either today or yesterday, uh, the Centre for Social Justice did a piece of research that showed that actually people do support more stop and search. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know what you have to... But at the end of the day, as I've said already, politicians, I don't care what colour they are, they need to get their... Stop interfering with the police, the police operational matters. Mm. Uh, Khan is doing this in other areas. Stop interfering. Let the police do their job. Thank you so much. So we need to cons uh, fill a survey when it comes. Don't ignore. Be we part need to of your community yeah. safety team. Yeah, be part of your community safety team. We need to be active very very proactive in things that pertaining to our community because most of us when we sit on something that is not about our family immediate family we just say oh ah look at ah they are discussing this again we can we discuss especially when you go to saloon you see them discussing as if the discussion there we go somewhere is going nowhere but when we find things that are sent to us to contribute our own opinion we need to be taking proactive uh step to do them so that we know that we are contributing our quota to the safer community mm. you know another thing that even amazes me is when government tries to make amends they put some money forward for us to look for local solutions to local problems Mm -hmm. If you put on seminars, you put on workshop, mm -hmm. you can't find enough people to attend. True. And a lot of <laughs> people are complaining things are not going well. Mm -hmm. Myself and some of my team, we're thinking of, especially within the African community, we like parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somehow, no matter how busy they are, they find time to attend parties. Mm -hmm. If you put something that will benefit them, give them safety, improve mm. their lot, mm. they cannot find time to attend. True. But when it's happening, they're there. Mm. They find the time, they find the money, they find the resources. So we think maybe we should take mm. some of these initiatives into parties. Mm. Because that's where we find them. <laughs> We're thinking of how we can design packages, community safety initiatives. In if people doing parties can give us a slot... <laughs> Either to act a film or do something so that we carry the relevant information True. to where people are. Mm. Because they said there's no hard to reach. Everybody goes to Tesco. How come we can't find people at relevant gatherings where they pick up ideas and mm. nuggets that will improve their life, improve the lives of their children? Mm. Yeah. yeah, honestly, that's an honest truth. Because we had we had this uh, workshop in uh, Civic Souk the other day about gun, knife, and crime. And we had a guest speaker that was speaking. I wish, like, I could call everybody, come, so come, come, and come, come and listen. Mm -hmm. Come and listen. All the secrets you don't know about your kids. Come and listen and know this. Know their body language. Know their this funny language that they speak. Uh, farm and all those things <laughs> that you don't understand. You don't know the meaning. Come. A well, few of us were there. Only few of us. This is Les Berry on PRZ Radio 109.2 FM. Please, we are talking about safer community. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. And I'm, I believe that this will be relevant to wherever you are as well. If you have not joined us from the beginning of this show, please, I, I beg of you, go and download this episode and listen to it over and over and over again. If you have any further question, please email it to us on lesbury at przfm.com let's be real przfm.com and when we have another safety seminar i'll be letting you know if you are around in this country in this town please i will employ you to join us this is very very important we must do our home past and even we know that we have done what we can do and god will make our community safe in jesus name 
I don't know what you are going through, whatever the issue in your life, whatever your uh, community is. I pray that the Lord will build your walls with peace in the mighty name of Jesus. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Thank you, uh, kids. I really appreciate you coming. He's a very, very, very busy man. And uh, Tyre, you are very, very busy. I know. Very, very busy. Thank you for taking your time out to come and speak to our community. And I pray that people will give us feedback from this episode. And God bless you, Rigu. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Bye and stay safe. of women empowering women and educating each other through our life experiences, she is the founder of Women's Forum, Let's Be Real, a forum for women to work through issues and set and accomplish goals together. Held every second Friday of every month at 6 Elton Road, Lee Green, London. Keep up with Let's Be Real here on PRZFM every Tuesday, 8pm to 9pm.